Hello, my name is Greg Crinklaw, and I'm the developer of SkyTools. Today I am previewing the nightly planner for the new SkyTools 4 for visual observing. If you are unfamiliar with SkyTools, it is a suite of software tools to aid in all aspects of observing. At its heart is a sophisticated model of your sky, telescope, eyepiece, eye, and target object. It can predict the faintest star that you can see, and for diffuse objects, it can calculate the contrast between the object and the background sky. As a result, it can tell you how difficult an object will be to see in the eyepiece, not just generically, but for a specific telescope, location, target object, time of night, and sky conditions. The nightly planner is the hub of sky tools, a jumping off place to the atlas, finder charts, object information, etc. Its purpose is to help select suitable target objects for your telescope and conditions, to select objects best observed on a particular night, and to tell you what the ideal time is to observe them. The planner is list-based. I have the Herschel 400 list selected. We can get lists via the target lists menu. Lists can be downloaded from our website, shared via SDX file, read from a text file, or custom created via the nightly observing list generator. Objects can be added to an existing list by designation or via the database power search, which is a powerful filtered search of the entire database. The main selections are across the top, night, location, telescope, and observer. I have the seeing set to average at 65 degrees Fahrenheit with 70% humidity. So let's have a quick look at some of the more important columns. Let's see, NGC 6633 is an open cluster. It is viewed best between 9.35 p.m. and 11.45 p.m. The optimum time to observe it is 9.57 p.m. It will be apparent in the eyepiece, and it doesn't get any less difficult than that. The ideal eyepiece has been selected from the eyepieces attached to this telescope. It has chosen the 8 mm radian. If the object is difficult to detect, then this will be the eyepiece that maximizes detection. Otherwise, as in this case, it will be the one that gives the most pleasing view. So I'm going to select NGC 6633. We can see that the graphic at the top has changed. It spans from noon to midnight to noon the next day. The background is shaded via the model sky brightness. The gold line is the altitude of the sun. The teal line is the altitude of the moon. The red dashed line is the altitude of the selected object. Lastly, this blue line is the relative viewing quality. If at the top, the object is as good as it gets from this location in this telescope, this is based on the model for contrast in astronomical seeing. The colored blocks below summarize the quality. The green is the time during which it is at its best. Yellow is when it's just okay, and red is when it is very poor. You shouldn't bother to look when it is red. When yellow, it can be observed, but it will be best when green. If you're making a challenging observation, it should always be during the green period. Similarly, the next row of blocks tells us the viewing difficulty at various times. You can see as the cluster sets lower in the sky, or after the moon comes up, it becomes more difficult to detect. The list can be filtered by object class, constellation, quality, difficulty, splitability for double stars, or whether or not the object has been logged. I'm going to start by setting it to best quality only. You can see that only the green colored ones remain. Now I'm going to eliminate all the difficult and challenging objects by selecting apparent and or less difficult. So now we have objects that are obvious, easy, and apparent only. And I'm going to bed at 11.30, so let's limit it to only those objects that are good before that time. So now we have a good list of objects to observe tonight. 
I can copy these objects to a special list just for this night, and then load other lists and filter them in the same way, copying all the keepers to the special list. Let's have a look at the blue snowball for a minute. This telescope is a Dobsonian, and this object passes nearly overhead, where Dobbs have trouble tracking. A 10 degree Dobson's hole has been defined for this telescope. The blank spot in the middle here is when you should avoid observing it because the object is in the hole. Also, I want to make a note. We can print the list, print custom finder charts for each object, or load the list into the real-time tool and drive our telescope to each of them at the appropriate time. There is also an optimum viewing sort that will prioritize objects that are setting to get them first, and then minimize movement between each object. The real-time tool can use this sort at the telescope to create a tour, taking you from one object to the next. Sky tools can even read aloud information about each object as you observe them. So there you have a preview of the new SkyTools 4 Nightly Planner. Clear skies and thanks for watching.